With Denver having gone up 3-0 to win their 11th straight against LA, Nikola Jokic is on the verge of sweeping a man in the playoffs for a consecutive season whom almost half the league considers the GOAT. Game 3 featured a top 10-15 to 15 player all-time at the very least in Joker, finishing one assist shy of his 18th career playoff triple-double, with Nikola's 17 already being third most in NBA postseason history. Aaron Gordon's frontline operation was accessed via Denver's offensive improvisation, consisting of making smart reads to break down the Lakers' coverage. This led to AG posting a commanding 29-15 postseason bests in both points and rebounds. Jamal Murray followed up his Hail Murray from Game 2 with a 22-9-5 Kitchener setting of the table. Michael Porter Jr. erupted to drop 10 of his 20 in the fourth quarter. The front court of Porter, Gordon, and Jokic hauled down 35 boards, three less than LA's total as a team. One reason the Denver Nuggets clinic was utterly insane was, despite shooting 17.9% from three, they stopped settling and trusted the next pass to charge up a conclusive comeback for a third straight game. How Denver stormed back yet again is next. Just 13.4% of you are subscribed though, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Appreciate your support. The Nuggets had no trouble erasing either a 10-point deficit in Game 1 or a 20-point deficit in Game 2. When getting down 12 points in Game 3, commencing was Denver deja vu. When Gordon slips a ball screen, a behind the back from Murray is made a dime when James flops and AG reverses. Take in the combination of brute force and fundamentals in the post from Gordon as he on the left block puts his shoulder into, then drop steps two defenders before following up his own miss around four defenders. Reggie Jackson firstly getting to his offhand off the window to skirt past D'Lo and finesse it over Rui, and secondly collapsing the pressure for an over-the-shoulder ring to the backdoor cutting Christian Brown generated a couple key buckets when Denver was in the rough. Speaking of such, still down 10, and it was Murray and Porter Jr. who triggered a much-needed Colorado tornado. As Jamal is going to showcase an insane bit of individual shot creation and somehow find upper and lower body leverage for a shot over the fully enclosed Gabe Vincent. It was then Porter Jr. attacking Reeves in an early O ISO and getting to his left, and exploiting the size mismatch. D'Lo shamefully had zero points in this one, which is unacceptable from an LA standpoint, but we've been covering Denver as of late, and off one of D'Angelo's bricks, it's Russell making a second mistake in just over a possession by getting caught out of position with an errant steal attempt, collapsing the Lakers' transition D and freeing an easy Joker hoop. Multiple Jokic ball screens lead to a good solid play this time from D'Lo to stunt, which provides decent help for LA's drop coverage, but Vincent is just too small to guard Jamal Murray. The top coaching staff's first play out of the break was organized, as Malone draws up a DHO clear out with Jokic handing off to Murray, and the Murray comfortability soft touching it home under duress is beautiful to witness. Denver carried over an excellent close to the second with directly out of their locker room responding to the staff's message with a 9-2 run to open the third quarter. Keeping that positive spurt flowing, it was Gordon building up what was ultimately his career high in playoff scoring as Porter's up fake baits Rui on the catch, then a high IQ, Jokic-esque body language mimicking of a mid-range shot leaves Gordon open for Michael to bounce it to the dunkers for an acrobatic error in attack. It's unclear as to why LeBron doesn't pick up Aaron right here and use his voice to tell a teammate to pick up Murray. You have to guard the basket. The playing on rookie mode, low level IQ bot mistake from Braun frees up Gordon, who's playing on Hall of Fame. As Anthony Davis lazily lurks in no man's land, it's an easy Jokic kick from the post. And how is Jamal this wide open after what happened last game? Darvin Ham kept Vincent on Murray, and Jamal would take him to the post for a couple back downs and turn around. The Nuggets get outstanding spacing for this KCP retrieval of a Jokic handoff and step back, as at this point Denver was attacking the weak point in Vincent. Working against a 2-3 zone like they've been for a lot of this series, a stagger for Jamal features another rookie mode bot level James rotation, leaving Gordon lurking in his favorite position, the dunker spot. Thriving off craftiness with his old man game, Jokic is well aware he'll have time to let it fly at the top of the key after this elusive fake handoff. In the non-Jokic minutes to kick off the fourth, 
it was the Michael Porter Jr. show. In tight confines, MPJ's triple threat gets him the subtlest of first steps going left, and this high arcing pull up is tough. Improvising after option A doesn't pan out, Porter initiates a two-man give-and-go with Gordon. Michael then gets the pitch from Aaron to elevate over the game's self-proclaimed best defender. Christian Brown would make his presence felt when the sophomore diced up Reeves with an in-and-out, and Christian's strides generated the force to make this a blistering attack. On his very next trip down the floor, it was the Kansas menace making up for Gordon getting caught out of position by bothering Torian's release just in time to force a brick before Porter hauls it down. Nuggets coaching staff runs this patented Denver action called Flip Pin Jokic, where multiple avenues can clear up depending on how the defense reacts. In this case, the Lakers lose track of Porter, who Brown hooks up on what was another dreadful defensive breakdown. Two of Michael Porter's 20 get produced despite Austin Reeves playing the best possible defense he could have, but good offense beats good defense any day of the week. Whipping it around to make the patiently correct passing decisions to respond to the Lakers' overhelp, in this case, leads to KCP finding Jokic on a curl cut going left. Nifty Porter snake dribble with Davis switching gets Michael space to hit another seemingly unmakeable fourth quarter pull up. But aside from that bucket and this Joker circus shot plus the foul, the rest of the way, what sealed it for Denver was their defense. The Mile High City strung together to hold the Lakers to zero points for a 2 minute and 40 second span, most of which took place in the final five minutes. You gotta earn every inch. Meanwhile, when it comes to this Denver team's winning mentality, Joker said it best when it comes to how this Nugs team avoids complacency as a whole. Uh, I mean, I, I think I said one time, like winning is a lifestyle for us, and uh, you, we really enjoy it. Like, it's really good when you're winning, and when you're winning, when you, especially when you win a lot of games. Like everybody's happy, everybody wants to play, everybody's buying into, buying into the system. So, winning, I think it's a lifestyle, and uh, we don't wanna, we don't wanna. <laughs> I mean, I was here when we were losing, so I don't want to go back to that, let's say like that. Will this be a nugget sweep, or will LA force a fifth game in the mile high? Let me know your take down below in the comments. Best answer gets next video's commenter shout out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st earn a free jersey or shoe of their choosing. Today's shout out goes to JJD who says the Timberwolves can challenge the Nuggets due to their absolutely elite defense and the fact that they're a matchup nightmare for anyone in the West. They're the only Western Conference team able to slow down Nikola Jokic, with Anthony Edwards proving he can turn it on at any time. I have no doubt this team can make a deep finals run. Appreciate you, JJD. It is lining up to be a dope round two between Mini and the Mile High. Thank you for watching. Your boy D-Flow signing off.